the enemy is the Pharaoh. And what is the Pharaoh? He's a slave driver. The enemy is a slave driver. Sin is a slave driver. It's a tyrant. If you obey sin, you're in rebellion to God. If you obey the flesh, you're in rebellion against the Spirit. If you obey the world, you're in rebellion against heaven. But if you have to then what? Disobey the flesh. Then you're obeying the Spirit. The Spirit, it says, leads us to turn down the flesh. The Spirit even leads us to crucify the flesh, to say no. We can say no to the command of the flesh, to the order of the enemy. We can say no to it. It means you have that power to say no to sin. You have the power to say no to the devil. And the other thing with those people, what they did in Philadelphia 240 years ago, was according to the status quo, it was not only an act of rebellion to sign that paper, it was an act of treason. And they knew it. If they lost the war, those who wrote the declaration, maybe that's why Jefferson didn't want, didn't want to write it, would be executed. So Benjamin Franklin said, let us all hang together or we shall all surely hang separately. The Declaration of Independence, which is celebrated now, was at the time an act of treason. To declare freedom is treason to the forces of tyranny, to the forces of the enemy. It's treason. And so the great, the great price they had, to, they had to go. They knew there was a great price to it. If you look at the last words of the declaration, you see it there. It says, And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. They pledge their lives. In other words, we know what this means. We know what that means that if this doesn't go, we are dead. We lose everything. And so we are pledging everything. Knowing the price of others, we have to, we sign this. It's all out now. No return. Moment of no return. They came to that absolute point of saying, no matter what, we're out of the old now. No matter what, we're out of that bondage. We're out. We're free now. We, we fight as free people. We live as free people, we win as free people, or we lose or we die as free people, but we're free people. Live or die, we do so as free people. And so that, and that was for political freedom. We are given, we are to live for a greater freedom than that. Spiritual freedom, total freedom. Now you may have been fighting that bondage in your life or that, that, that unhealthy thing or that unclean thing, Fighting that thing just as they were. Maybe thoughts. Whatever it is. The, you must fight. That is part of it. Not everything happens. You know, there are, there are stories where people just pray and like that, something's, something's gone from their life. But most of the time, it's not like that. Most of the time, God chooses that we have to choose for him. We have to choose against that sin. We have to choose against that thing. So you do have to fight. And you will have you will have fights where you are more victorious. You will have times when it's less victorious. But keep fighting, you win. They didn't just fight, though. They did more. And the same with us. You have to get to that point, not just of fighting that thing, resisting that thing, but of you have to get to the point of the declaration, the point of independence. The Hebrews were slaves in Egypt. But they had to come to the point, they had to come to their Independence Day. Their Independence Day, far it happened a long time before America existed, was called Passover. That's when they broke free of Egypt. And they did so before they saw the freedom. They declared themselves free before they saw the freedom. On Passover, they were declaring their independence. We are no longer of Egypt. What they did separated them from Egypt. Once well, they did it by the command of God, not by the command of Pharaoh, they were no longer of Egypt when they did it. But they didn't see the victory or the freedom until it happened. So they first declared it, the declaration, by doing what they did. They had to cross that line. And throughout the Bible, people of God have to cross that line and before they see the victory. Gideon, 
Before he could become the hero he was called to be, he had to tear down the idol, or he had to, he had to, he had to, do, he had to go against that idol in his own backyard to declare he is not of that anymore. He's independent of that. The rebellion that brought freedom to Israel in the days of Antiochus, Epiphanes, began with one act, one declaration in a sense of saying, I am not of this anymore, independence by Mattathias. Esther had to come to that point in her life when she went into the presence of Ahasuerus because of God, when she told the king, in effect, that she's a child of Israel. She went against the law. That was her declaration. Those of the declaration saying pledging our sacred honor is like what Esther, she said, if I perish, I perish. I'm crossing the line now. If, I'm gonna, if you want to be free, you have to cross that line. That's what was needed for Esther to be free. That was her declaration of independence in every way. And, and in Hanukkah, that same thing happened in the sense that when, when they made the act of saying, I'm no longer of this, I'm not following this, this thing, they were, they were saying that's it, no matter what, even if it means my life I am free no matter what. Messiah said, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. But if the Son has set you free, that's the second part. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin, but if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. So it is written, put off the old self, put on the new self. It is also written, sin shall not be master over you. Do not, therefore, submit again to a yoke of slavery, for it was for freedom that Messiah has set you free. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. You are free. So the people, the great people of God, all had to come to that place of declaring their independence from sin, from evil, from an evil system, their independence from the flesh, from the independence from the devil, Drawing a line in the sand. In each case, they had to proclaim their freedom before they saw their freedom. In each case, they had to declare it. Just as it were the children of Israel on Passover. They had to put the blood of the lamb on the door. Now in Israel, or actually Israel, you would think that's one thing. But in Egypt, that was, a, that was blasphemy. Because a lamb was a god. That was blasphemy. That was, they were leave, that was their act of leaving Egypt. Once they put the blood of the lamb on the door, they were saying, we are leaving Egypt. We are, not, we are not of the old anymore. It was the blood of the lamb that declared their freedom. And our faith begins with what? Passover, same day. When Messiah, the Passover lamb, died on that cross. The blood of the lamb. It's that same blood that gives you the power of freedom from any bondage, from that bondage and any bondage from that sin and any sin. Our faith, our Independence Day is that. Passover, Messiah, 